While Hillary Clinton continues to play the blame game over her loss last year, some of her newest excuses, well, Brexit and a guy by the name of Nigel Farage. The amount of fabricated false information that your voters were given uh, by the For both sides, Leave campaign. Say, yeah. Well, I'm not as familiar mm -hmm. with, but mm -hmm. I'm very familiar with what the Leave side said because they transported a lot of that on behalf of uh, Trump. You had, you know, with uh, Farage campaigning for Trump and the like. You know, the big lie is a very uh, potent tool. Here to react, former UK Independence Party leader and Fox News contributor <laughs> Nigel Farage. Uh, the big lie, Nigel, it was all you, it was all a lie, and it was all a conspiracy to defeat her. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm a terrible person. I'm an unacceptable <laughs> human being, um, as she said. Um, I, I was only sorry she didn't call me deplorable. I would have enjoyed that. Uh, isn't it interesting? I mean, she's going around the UK, selling her book at £20 a copy. Clearly, the Clintons haven't made enough money yet. Um, and it's all about why she lost the election, and it would appear that Brexit, the phenomenon of Brexit, which spilled across to the USA, is the, reason she, is the reason that she lost. And she's basically saying that I lied to the British electorate. And what she's doing here is not just defending her own position, but acting as the high priestess of the globalist movement. She wants to reverse Brexit. Uh, I tell you what, it's a, she's making a sad sorry spectacle of herself. Well, when she says um, the amount of fabricated false information, you know she wants to say hashtag fake news, but that belongs to the other guy. <laughs> well, that's right, it does. Um, and the honest truth is that if you look at her record and her husband's record, be it on NAFTA, be it on China, be it on many other trade deals, they consistently told the American people these deals would be good for America, and they turned out not to be. And remember, that had Hillary become president, she wanted America to join, as she described it, a hemispheric common market. Hillary sees the European Union as a prototype for a bigger form of global government. So she hates Brexit, she hates me, and she thinks it gave Trump the edge. How much relevance does she have now? She's traveling the world blaming, a lot of people say she's blaming everyone else that she lost the election. How much rel relevance does she have? Oh, yeah. I mean, none of this is her fault. I mean, she can't recognize the fact that her own sense of entitlement is what put off so many American voters. I, I don't think she's hugely relevant unless, unless she's deciding perhaps to have another tilt at the presidency. Now, she, mm. denies, she denies that in public, but if she's not doing it, why is she going around the world making these big political arguments that she wants everything that happened in 2016 to be reversed? She also famously said that she wanted a borderless world. I mean, isn't she the one that sort of uh, in front of you know, rich audiences will speak their language of globalism but then try to go to the voters and hide it? That strikes me as a lie. Well, her husband was terribly good at that. I mean, Bill often appeared as a populist um, at elections, and yet when he was elected, governed as a globalist. And, uh, and uh, exactly the same thing would happen with Hillary. You know, when she's with um, her friends on Wall Street and the multinationals, she sings a very different song. I, I have to say, it is a, a sorry sight to see somebody who is incapable incapable of recognizing their own deficiencies. She's deep in denial, uh, and I just think she ought to recognize she lost, it's over, move on. <laughs> All right, his name is Nigel Farage, also known as the Big Liar, according to what we just heard. <laughs> Nigel, thank you very much for joining thank us today you. from LA.